Construction Champions. It's your host, Ron Nussbaum, and we're here for another amazing episode of Construction Champions Podcast, where we're still bulldozing the house down. We're burning it to the ground so we can repair, rebuild it, because that's what we do. We're in the construction industry. We fix things. We get in there. We get dirty, and we get shit done every day. I am super excited about today's episode. Alexis, it is great to have you here today. Thank you, Ron. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to have you. We're going to rock and roll. We're going to have a great show. But before we get started here, why don't you tell everybody a little bit about yourself and what excites you about the construction industry? Sure. So I have been a construction professional for 10 years now, and it's primarily been in commercial roofing or some type of small residential handyman type work. Outside of the construction industry, I would say I'm a personal growth enthusiast and entrepreneur. That's where my passions lie. And I would say what excites me about construction nowadays is the fact that we're really in a turn of the industry and the market. I see a lot of people that are in my generation starting to take over companies or starting to start their own companies. And I, I'm very excited about what's to come from this new approach to the industry and the markets that we've all come to know and love. Uh, so yeah, I guess that's, that's what I would say excites me right now is the turnover. <laughs> well, I mean, that's exciting. That, I mean, it's one of the reasons I do this podcast is because if we don't get out in front of this as all the new guys and girls come into this and we don't start to transfer that knowledge, it, it's going to be a problem for the construction industry. And it excites me what's happening out there there is there's a huge change that's happening it's not just construction champions there, there's many people just like yourself that are out there having an impact so we're gonna dive right in and we're let's get right into the million dollar question and that is okay. what makes a construction champion you know ron i have been thinking about this since last week when you teed it up that we are going to be having a conversation about construction champions. And I think what I boiled it down to for me is someone that is going to walk into a room, walk into a company, walk into a conversation related to construction and be willing to ask, why are we doing it this way? And is that really the best way for us to continue doing it? I love it. The the age old question of why do we do it this way? And all too often in the construction industry, what do we hear? It's because it's how they taught me. It's how we've always done it. <laughs> Which we all know is not a valid reason to go out there and do stuff. So I love I that's a it's just a really good point. Because we do, we get too hung up in construction of just like, this is just how we've always done it. And what there's nothing wrong with that, right? Like it's not, I'm not saying it's wrong to be stuck in our habits of using technology the same way we always have, or the same processes for communications or change orders or anything like that. It's not broken, which, you know, leads to the other conversation of if it's not broke, don't fix it. Well, if it's not broken, okay, maybe we don't have to fix something, but we certainly can make it better. Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, we go down these roads, but I mean, companies do this all the time. I've been down this road. What you ask yourself, is it the best way to continue doing it how we've done it? Like you said, if it's not broken, don't fix it. But at heart, we're fixers, we're builders, we're kind of like that. That's naturally, I think that's why we get so stuck a lot of times in business and construction is that it's like, it's in our just best, in, it's in our narrative to just duck, jump in there and try to fix stuff. Or well, we want to be doing what we were doing if, if that wasn't the case. And uh, 
I think it's always good to take a view at stuff, like at, to assess it. Like it's companies grow. There's a lot there. There's a lot to look at, and not just how we've always done it, or if it's not broken. Like, is it scalable? We talk about scale a lot these days. Is it scalable? Is it efficient? I would say efficiencies are one of the greatest lacks, I would say, in construction or greatest rooms for opportunity to improve. Now, within construction, in my 10-year experience, I worked on the contractor side. I've been a business owner. I've worked in distribution. I've been closely in relation to manufacturer reps. Like I really believe I've seen a lot of different avenues and it's the forefront of just being willing to like get uncomfortable. I would say that my forte in the construction industry really is kind of startups or those mom and pop businesses that are trying to figure out how to get to the next level. And I would say in construction, getting to that next level is the processes. It is the technology. It is the customer service that you offer with, you know, your technology and your platform, but it's also just being willing to step outside of the comfort zone. And that's like that first piece. That's the personal development that I get excited about in life. And like, once you start applying that to business, you can skyrocket to things you've never even imagined. The sky's the limit in the construction industry. So yeah, let's dive, let's dive into that. That's how how do we get people outside of their comfort zone? That is always like this is how we've always done. It's exactly what you're talking about. That mom and pop. That this is just how we how how do we get or how do we move them into that growth mindset or put them in a position where they can really have something. That's a great question. I would say if we could bottle it all up into some sort of magic potion that people who wanted to grow their business could just take a swig of and suddenly they were, you know, as brave as could be. Um, I would say it takes two things. One, it takes the right people, right? You have to have a uh, innovator, I would say, to be able to take someone's vision, that business owner's vision, know how to get to the end result of that vision with process and procedures, and then can implement that whole roadmap. So that's the people side of what you have to have in place in order to really be able to turn the way you've always done things on its head. But going back to the business owners, to answer your question, Ron, I would say, how do you do that? And it's really just a leap of faith. Like I would say most of the time people either have to be stressed out enough that they're like, I can't sustain this or they're floundering and they're like, now I really can't figure out, like I'm at the bottom of the barrel. What else can I try? Most of the time when I see people looking for help in their businesses, it tends to be because they are ready for something else. It definitely is a leap of faith. I mean, it's what we originally when you step out on that journey to begin with you're taking that leap of faith so it, it's i like to i when i just think about this kind of stuff because this stuff's very impactful for people because we really do get in our heads and it sounds like you help people get out of their heads and be able to move into a place where i can start to have a vision we all had a vision at one point in time. And I, I think we lose sight of that. I've said it on here so many times. I think even with you working with startups, like it's about understanding that vision, that lifestyle, what exactly do you want out of this? And then being able to bring that to fruition. Exactly. And it's being brave enough to say, like, I'm going to try it and I'm going to keep trying it until I find what works for me. Right. So Whatever construction you're in as the listener, you had to get brave enough to step into this to begin with, right? You had to get brave enough to go out and start your own company. You had to get brave enough to hire your first employee. You've had to be courageous and brave this entire time. 
Now that the machine is working and you think about adding something new, really all you're doing is changing the type of fuel that you use or you're enhancing your, uh, I don't know, injector system. You're adding a different type of oil. You're doing something to refine what you already have existing. So, and let me not say so. Then the next step after you add this new thing is that trial and error process and being willing to stick with it all the way to the end. Like you can't just get in. It's going to be uncomfortable. It's going to be not what you expect. And it's probably going to take longer than you were hoping because that's what always happens in life and in business. But if you stick it out, then it's going to pay off. The only reason I feel like I see a lot of people change their business strategy and then fail is because they abandon it too soon. Yeah, I would agree with that. There's there's a lot of this isn't working. That's where or, or we'll go back. Like anytime you change or you you're adjusting personally, business wise, there's a point of uncomfortness. And I always say, like, you have to make it through that. And it's typically going to be about 30, 45 days, and depending on the actual scope of what you're doing. But you have to get through that uncomfort phase where you're, you're changing how either you do something operationally or you do something personally, or even if you change something in the gym. And People don't have the fortitude to hang in there and get through that, but it's it's glorious at the other side. I think you you really dove into something there at the beginning of that where you were, you touched on why we do it, how we've always done it, because that's the comfortable thing. No matter where you came from, you know, we when you're a startup, a lot of guys that start up a company, they, they decided they wanted to go out on their own. And what do they do is they take everything that they saw before with them, minus the stuff that they didn't like, and they just do it. And they have no rhyme or reason to that. It's just, that's how the guy before me did it. So that's how I'm going. And you don't even know where they got that. So not having a willingness to investigate that, and figure out what is better. I mean, I think this is a core principle that people have to be in tune with. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I mean, it is a core principle. And I one of the sayings that uh, really struck me, and I got this from a mentor of mine who we integrate, you know, Buddhist principles, so to speak, into our lifestyle and our work habits as well very simple sentence we must begin and we must continue and when it comes to that fortitude that you're talking about when it comes to the what's next it's not just good enough to start it you have to continue it when it's not comfortable when you're burnout when you feel like it's all burning around you. That's probably good. And it does have to burn so that you can rebuild it. Like you said, at the very opening, rebuild it the way you want it. So yeah, burning it all down, burn down the old so you can rebuild the new with that consistent fortitude. Um, man, it, it, again, it lets you open up all the new doors that you've been looking for. Yeah. Because a lot of times like what, what you built won't get to the next level. And I'm a, I'm a big component of you have to understand what you want because not everybody has to have a $5 million company. Not everybody needs to have a $10 million. Not everybody needs a 20. You have to figure out like what is that end outcome that you're trying to create? I've always scaled just to scale. And I, I think I was just on a call with a lady and we were talking about this. And like, there's a lot of chaos in that, especially when you're doing it for no other reason other than just rapid growth. Like you're trying to just be the, the biggest and fastest growing in the construction industry. And you need to figure out what you want and then go after that. And then you can, that's when you create that. And when I talk about burning everything down, like you, you got those different realms of different portions of your life. Like I'm in a, a portion of my life now with my team. My promise to them is I won't sink the ship. Like 
I won't like we're going to have fires. It's just naturally inherent for me to be burning a few things here and there. Because if you're not putting pressure on stuff or you're not pushing the boundaries, you don't ever know. Like, what is that breaking point? So I like to say, like, it's a ship. It's cruising down. I won't sink the ship. Now, we might have a sail over here that is completely engulfed and not functioning, but we can rebuild that. And I think we lose sight of that is like stuff's rebuildable. It's never, even if you burn it to the ground, it's never going to completely destroy what you have. Because you're already starting with more knowledge, more experience, more information than you had before you even had the sale that is now destroyed. And Ron, I'm really grateful that you said or mentioned scaling because even inside an existing business that maybe they love the level of income that they're at. They love the amount of gross profit that they're generating. It seems like it's a finely tuned machine, but it would be nice to stay where we're at as far as size goes and streamline processes, improve communication. Let's become the best at what we possibly can inside of what we've already become very good at then it's another opportunity to ask ourselves, why have we always done it this way? And it says, is it the right way to keep moving forward? Good's the enemy of great. And then what I've recently started telling myself is great is the enemy of legendary. Because we can find ourselves in this position where, you know, we we're, we're really, really great, but you're on the cusp of being legendary at what you do. And we we let this stuff cloud our vision on the decisions. And like you said, it's like we can be really good at all of this. That's fine. You know, being great isn't for everybody. Now, construction champions out there, I know we're here to be champions. So in order to do that, you have to be legendary. So good isn't good enough. And that's what you have to look at this stuff and you have to understand that we can possibly get better. And then want to get better, right? It's one thing to get started and say that we want it. But if you have leadership within a company that through and through the entire organization is all about steering our ship in the same direction, regardless of what storms are going to come our way, regardless of what unidentified land masses aren't on our map that we have to somehow navigate around all of the hiccups we already know they're coming right we're in construction things go wrong literally every single day we are the most reactive industry probably in my opinion uh so we already know how to deal with chaos and really when it comes to your business and mixing things up and being willing to push in those uncomfortable realms or fine tune those areas and be committed to that legendary greatness that you're looking for with a legacy. It's just really being willing to continue that journey. And I think you've hit it a handful of times, Ron, by saying we get used to what we're used to. We get comfortable in our comfort zones or we're just going through the motions as opposed to saying, what can I do to be 1% better today? I mean, I know that's a philosophy that many people are familiar with nowadays, being 1% better today than I was yesterday. And then at the end of the year, you know, you've grown this much. I think what you were just describing there is like, it's what we naturally are. Like It's sometimes where my disconnect happens in the construction industry is because it's contractors, it's builders, it's people in the construction industry. Like I said at the beginning, like it's our natural, our natural intuitiveness is to fix things and make things better and make stuff function better. But then when we look at this business, it's like none of that transpires except for the bad characteristics of it, where you're just like you're down in the weeds doing something that is not what we should be doing as business owners, but none of the, like you go build a house. How many times you go to the car? Here's a great example of this. Go to a coffee shop or go to the gas station where all the contractors and builders are in the morning. 
And what are they talking about? How they could have manufactured or done something better than whoever's already doing it. But yet we go into bit we go into business and then we go to the go out there and we just do it and we just say, hey, this is just how we've always done it. We don't take any of that creativeness and then apply it to our business. Oh yeah. Being willing to get creative inside a business. I mean, Ron, I I don't know what your education background is. I was a first generation uh four-year degree graduate, okay? I really feel like I went to school because my dad told me that I was going to go to school and that I was going to be a first generation, and I am so grateful for that. But what I ended up learning more from the piece of paper that I walked away from is what it takes to set your sight on a goal and to get yourself there. That's the same thing I learned in competitive sports. It's the same thing that we learn in life over and over again. And when you're talking about legendary, when you're talking about being a champion, what sets the difference between a legendary champion is the fact that they're the ones doing the work. They're not just talking about it. They're taking action. I would say that right. There's a mic drop that that I mean, that exactly explains. That's what the definition of this is to be a champion is you put in the work. Look at Kobe, Jordan, Tom Brady. These guys, they put in the work nonstop, hard. So I love it. I love what you're doing. If uh, any of the construction champions out there wanted to connect with you, wanted to follow you, wanted to hear, hear about everything that you got going on, where's the best places for them to do that? I appreciate that, Ron. Um, I would say the best place to go first would be alexisray.com. That's where I house a lot of my personal growth and development aspects of my life. Um, also connected to the podcast that I host there, Evolving Truths Podcast. That's all about personal development. And then LinkedIn. You can find me on LinkedIn, Alexis Ray Lopez. I'm very active on LinkedIn as well. Connect there and I'm around. <laughs> awesome well thank you for being on the show today my pleasure this was awesome and i love what you're doing as far as raising the caliber of our construction industry so thanks for putting this out there ron hey it, it takes all of us it doesn't just take me i just like to say I'm, I'm like a facilitator of all of this i just get the right people in the right rooms and make it happen so it's been an absolute blast and thank you for taking your time out of your day Talk to you soon. All right, Construction Champions. Another episode where we really dove into why do we do it how we've always done it? Or if it's not broken, we don't need to fix it. But what do we do all the time? The exact opposite of that. I think there's always room for improvement, no matter where you're at along that journey. Even if you're exactly where you want to be sitting, I guarantee it can get better. Life can get better. You know, we've had people on here that built their dream contracting business and then was able to transition into having people run it so they could go do other things that they had a desire to go do. There's always options. You're never just capped where you're at. And I think that's a that's a champion mindset that you have to have no matter what you're doing is that you could always do just a little bit more. I'm not here to just push everybody to the absolute boundaries of craziness and business growth. I'm here to push everybody just to be the champions for the construction industry and to go out there and raise the bar in your own business, in your own life. Because, you know, we can probably always spend more time with our significant other or our kids than what we already do. And that all comes back to how good of a business that we can build that provides us the ability to go do those things. And we don't have to look at this as when I'm 50, 60 years old. You can build that business right now. There's guys in their 20s and their 30s that are doing that. We've had them on the show. So don't hesitate to go out there, continue to get better every day. So construction champions, 
Make sure you join our free mastermind group on Facebook, Construction Champions Mastermind. Pretty easy to find. Where we're connecting guests and listeners all in one place so we can have a collaborative relationship. Make sure you check out the website, constructionchampionspodcast.com. Make sure you go check out all of our sponsors who continue to help keep this show rocking and rolling. So, Construction Champions, until next time, be the champion you were meant to be.